Greetings and salutations, this is Akirishin. In this video, I will be featuring the P-47N Thunderbolt, an American multi-role fighter, which is equipped with eight 12.7 millimeter machine guns. The machine guns have low damage per second, a high rate of fire, and about a medium effective firing range. What, although these machine guns have a low damage per second, how they make up for that is that there are eight of them. Uh, the aircraft also is equipped with uh, 500 pound bombs that do 4300 in damage and have a damage radius of 75 meters. It is also equipped with rockets that do a thousand damage each and have a damage radius of 30 meters. And there are 10 of those rockets. This aircraft is described as having low effect effectiveness in maneuvering combat. I can tell you that is not an exaggeration. <laughs> the uh, Thunderbolt uh, is an excellent aircraft, but it is not particularly maneuverable. And so to try to assist it in that regard, I have equipped, as I, as I do with all fighters, um, the Control Surface Adjustment 3, which increases maneuverability in turns by 3%, and Lightweight Airframe 3, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 3%. This aircraft really needs those um, upgrades. You know, in some fighters, it's just kind of, you know, piling it on deeper in terms of maneuverability. But um, for the Thunderbolt, it's just absolutely essential. Now, in terms of the third upgrade, uh, you have a few choices that you could go with. Um, the Thunderbolt is indicated to uh, have the problem of often catching fire. Uh, and so you could choose to go, for example, with self-sealing fuel tank which reduces the chance of fire and damage caused by fire by 50%, which is very significant. Um, but I have chosen instead to go with improved covering for a, a decrease of 20% to chance of critical damage to wings and tail, and also uh, increasing the aircraft's uh, hit points by 5%. Um, I chose to go with improved covering 3 because my thought is that I am already dealing with the fire chance by equipping the automatic fire extinguisher uh, and rather than double up on that and potentially waste an opportunity to improve the uh, Thunderbolt survivability I thought I would address a different aspect of its um, toughness by you know, going with the improved covering three. You know, you certainly wouldn't be wrong if you went with the self-sealing fuel tank. Um, but uh, for me, I chose improved covering. In terms of uh, ammunition, I went with the universal ammunition, which has a slightly greater chance of fire versus uh, critical chance. Um, as I've mentioned many times, the universal ammunition is not so universal. It varies in terms of its breakdown between chance of fire and chance of critical damage, depending upon the type of aircraft. I think smartly so here, uh, you know, the universal ammunition takes into account that this aircraft has, a, you know, its armaments have a high rate of fire, uh, and because, you know, they're just machine guns they don't have a huge chance of critical damage just by their very nature so they've accentuated its strong point which is the high rate of fire the eight machine guns 
As I mentioned, I have gone with the automatic fire extinguisher. I've also gone with automatic engine restarter. Why did I choose that versus, say, uh, some other aspect? Uh, for example, I could have gone with the control surface auto trim, which helps with restore controllability to wings and tail. But if you remember, in my um, upgrades, I went with the improved covering that already helps to reduce the critical damage to wings and tail. And, you know, my thought process is that a lot of times in this multi-role aircraft, you're going to be attacking ground targets, and you may be very close to the target. If your engine goes out uh, and you're close to the ground, there is a high likelihood that you are going to crash before you can recover from the engine loss. So that's why I chose engine restarter. And of course, to help us in those, um, you know, the close-in dogfights that we're trying to avoid, I did go with heavy-duty control services. But just bear in mind that, you know, in terms of strategy for this aircraft, because it is a poor-turning aircraft, you know, you you really don't want to go into the thick of things. You want to kind of work the peripheral of a of a um, you know area where there are a lot of um, engaged aircraft you want to work the peripheral of that area you know picking off um, targets as they become available and you know maybe slowly work your way into the combat area uh, rather than just dive into the middle of a hornet's nest because you just don't have the turning ability to deal with that um, but you know if you do find yourself in that situation um, at least, you know, the heavy-duty control surfaces gives you more of a chance. Uh, pilot skills-wise, uh, again, trying to deal with this maneuverability problem, which is the weakness of this aircraft. Um, I have gone with Aerobatics Expert for uh, increased maneuverability in all axes by 2%, and Aerodynamics Expert, which accentuates our um, lightweight airframe, and our control surface adjustment uh, by increasing their percentage effects by 40 percent. Alright, in terms of the aircraft specifications, you can see that the optimum uh, altitude for this aircraft is 1600 meters which is certainly a uh, medium altitude uh, stat. Uh, so it is going to perform best in medium altitude. It does okay in low altitude, but uh, again, we're talking about optimum altitude. Not that it's not capable below that. Uh, also, optimum airspeed is 469 kilometers per hour, which I would describe as a you know, medium to, to low aircraft speed. And here you have the average time to turn 360 degrees, 13 seconds. So if you're in that turning dogfight, 13 seconds to go 360 degrees. Now just, you know, so that you have some context to that, let's, let's take a look at one of the most maneuverable uh, line of aircraft, the uh, Yacht Line. And if we look at the Yak-3, which is a Tier 7 um, Russian fighter, you can see that its uh, average turning time for 360 degrees is 8 seconds. So it's got a 5 second advantage over the Thunderbolt. So that just kind of helps you, you know, um, understand what a liability it can be with the with the Thunderbolt definitely something to be <laughs> avoided okay um, in terms of the paint schemes you can see here that um, uh, currently it has the summer uh, paint scheme 
Uh, this is winter, desert, and marine. I think my favorite of these choices is the summer paint scheme. You know, what I don't understand uh, is why, you know, they didn't go with the um, really sharp looking silver uh, paint scheme that uh, this aircraft was often known for. I'll show you a picture of that um, right now. So you can see here this nice uh, silver paint scheme, which just, it just looks really sharp. So I don't know why they, you know, wouldn't have gone with that in, in game, but you know, maybe one day they'll add it. All right, so uh, what we are going to get into now is we are going to go to World of Warplanes website, use their compare aircraft tool to uh, compare the Thunderbolt to other tier seven multi-role fighters so you can see how it fits in uh, in comparison. So let's do that now. And we are here on World of Warplanes website using their compare aircraft tool uh, and we are going to be comparing the stats on the Thunderbolt to uh, five other multi-role aircraft at tier 7 and see how the Thunderbolt stacks up. So first we are looking at the Mitsubishi J4M Sinden and the chance fought F4U4 Corsair, which I just recently reviewed. Uh, in terms of gun armaments, uh, you see that the uh, J4M and the uh, Corsair both uh, slightly outclass the Thunderbolt in that regard. Uh, in terms of bombs and rockets, uh, you know, the Thunderbolt um, is superior to both the J4M and the Corsair. Uh, you would expect um, American multi-role aircraft to be better in the ground attack role than uh, other nations. So that's no surprise with the uh, J4M, certainly. In terms of survivability, the Thunderbolt is slightly more survivable than either the uh, J4M or the Corsair. You see that in the um, hit points for the Thunderbolt, which are uh, higher than those for the uh, J4M or the Corsair. In terms of top speed at best altitude, the Thunderbolt uh, is uh, inferior to the J4M. Um, by about uh, 30 kilometers per hour, but is superior to the Corsair by 10 kilometers per hour. I can tell you that flying the Corsair does sometimes seem uh, a bit slow. Uh, in terms of average time to turn, 360 degrees, uh, the J4M uh, is uh, inferior to that of the uh, wait a minute, that's not right. That's better. Why isn't it? In terms of average time to turn 360 degrees, um, and I don't know why this particular stat is messed up, but the J4M uh, has uh, is better in that regard uh, by one second, and the Corsair is better by 1.9 seconds. Now, I mean, when you look at this particular stats, for some reason it, it shows the J4M in red, which would suggest it's inferior, but in fact it's it's superior. So that's just a little glitch in the website there. Um, optimum airspeed, the uh, 
Thunderbolt is superior to the J4M and the Corsair in that regard. Um, not by uh, 9 kilometers per hour in the case of the J4M and by 64 kilometers per hour in terms of the Corsair. Optimum altitude, uh, the Thunderbolt and the J4M are the same, whereas the Corsair uh, suffers by 300 uh, meters, less than the Thunderbolt. Rate of climb, though, uh, both the uh, J4M and the Corsair have higher rates of climb than the Thunderbolt. Now, this is an interesting comparison because, you know, a lot of people are very concerned about um, the pay to win of premiums. And what we have here are two similarly situated Focke Wolf FW190s. One is the A model, one is the D model. The D model is in the normal uh, tech tree, whereas the A model is a premium. So it'll be interesting to see how that premium compares. Uh, and I think you, you'll see as we go down here that the biggest stat that the premium uh, is superior uh, to the 190D is in the gun armament uh, category. And both of the German uh, multi-rolls are superior to the Thunderbolt um, by pretty significant margins. But you see that the um, 190A is twice so in comparison to the 190D, so definitely a, a firearm, a uh, armament advantage there for the premium. Uh, but you go down and um, you see that uh, the 190D uh, and, and the 190A are both inferior to the Thunderbolt, but uh, the 190A more so uh, in terms of the bombs and the rockets. Uh, survivability, uh, the Thunderbolt uh, wins out in that category. Uh, you see that reflected in the hit points there. And looking at the top speed at best altitude, again, the Thunderbolt is faster than either the 190A or the 190B, but you see that the 190A significantly suffers in that respect more so than the 190D. So there's an example where, you know, the premium is not as good in terms of top speed at best altitude in comparison to its tech tree uh, brother. Uh, average time to turn, 360 degrees. Uh, that is the same for all three of these aircraft. Uh, optimum air speed, again, uh, the Thunderbolt uh, beats out its competition in that regard. Uh, and again, you see the 190A uh, here is uh, inferior to a greater degree than its uh, Tech Tree 190D uh, comparable aircraft. Uh, stall speed uh, is the same for all three of those aircraft. Optimum altitude, the 190A is uh, 200. Uh, meters uh, inferior uh, to the Thunderbolt, the 190D is the same. So again, your premium aircraft there is not as good uh, in the altitude uh, aspect as the uh, tech tree uh, version. A rate of climb, uh, both the German aircraft have a better, significantly better rate of climb than the Thunderbolt. All right, uh, finally, we're looking at the Yak 9U. And uh, in terms of gun, gun armament, the uh, Yak 9U is uh, superior to that of the Thunderbolt. Uh, the Yak 9U has no bombs and no rockets, so the Thunderbolt uh, just uh, crushes it in that category, of course. Uh, survivability, again, the Thunderbolt uh, superior in that regard. See that in the hit points. Top speed at best altitude. Uh, again, Thunderbolt, superior in that category. 
and average turning time. Now, you you would expect this from a nine, from a Yawk 9U. Uh, in comparison to the Thunderbolt, uh, it is going to be the Thunderbolt by two seconds. And you know what? That two seconds can be the difference between winning or losing a turning dogfight. Uh, optimum airspeed, the uh, Yawk 9U trails behind the Thunderbolt in that regard. Um, However, it has a better stall speed than the Thunderbolt. And in terms of altitude, the um, Yak 9U is inferior by 400 meters in the optimum altitude category, but it does have a better rate of climb than the Thunderbolt. So anyway, I hope that helps put the Thunderbolt in context with other Tier 7 multi-role uh, fighters. Having now uh, reviewed the aircraft's uh, stats and features and comparing it to other tier 7 multi-role fighters, let's head into a battle and see how it performs. We have drawn the Alpine map. We are going to head over to the air base. Let's uh, drop our ordnance first. good damage radius. We left uh, a couple items there though. Okay, so let's head on over here to the plant and I am pretty sure we're gonna catch some ground attack aircraft over there. Usually fighters, too many fighters don't head over to the plant because there are no um, air defense targets there for them to shoot at. Pretty aggressive uh, attack aircraft. Whoa! Lost some air control there. Wing control. Fighter. I wonder. I was thinking that was a ground attack aircraft. I wonder I could now turn it. <laughs> Alright, let's get over there and see if we can't get our revenge. Or maybe it will get us again. I want to say that's the fighter right there, yeah. So, it would be easy prey if we can get a few rounds on it. Yeah, it's gone. Alright, now we can work on these uh, heavy fighter. 
him. Fighter here with very low health. Back at all, he is dead. Oh, it's a yak. Better kill him faster. We are going to be so dead. Yeah, I don't know why he did that. He just kind of. Oh, this is I 220 here. He is just gonna use his turning ability. Not this time, buddy. Not this time. I'm better when I have some support. Alright, let's see. That hit the fighter put a hit on us. But. gonna come back though. That is gonna be ugly. So what we're gonna do here he is no doubt coming back. We're in control of all plants. It's half the battle. Yeah he's coming back. You know we knew that was coming didn't we? Alright This is just a hotbed of action over here. They are definitely going to go back to that plant. It's very odd that you find so many fighters over at that plant. Usually they don't bother. Murphy's Law, right? One time I say that, they're like hitting it hard. You know, this aircraft has really good reports about rapidly deteriorating guns. weather conditions. Support will be unable to reach you. Do but you read me? Over. The enemy is concentrating is near the plant. Okay, be so we have a chance careful. to take this guy out of this. Minus. Though we have to worry about that fighter, obviously, but you know what? We'll deal with him as it comes. First, let's get this guy. So this guy's on our tail. So the best thing we'll just turn into him. There's a heavy storm here. Unable to proceed. Let's see Return if we can get base. him to follow us Do closely. You copy? Keep it up. Victory him? is almost ours. <laughs> we got him. That was nice. Oh, well, that's always an unpleasant surprise, right? <laughs> oh, that was great. This guy's probably gonna get us. Great job today! We'll be waiting for you back home. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, bombardier. Um, effective fire. Subjugator. Uh, number one rank. Um, and very nice of him to, you know, acknowledge that kill. Uh, he was a very good sport about that. He definitely had outmaneuvered us and had us dead to rights. Um, so, you know, played the only thing I had to play. <laughs> All right, so you see, you know, those machine guns, if, if, if the machine guns on this aircraft uh, have any time on the target, 
they are devastating. Um, but, you know, where this plane suffers, as you saw, uh, was in the maneuverability department. Uh, we did get the Avenger accolade twice. Um, so two aircraft that had destroyed us, we destroyed them. That's always satisfying. I've got to say of that whole match, uh, the bomb kill was the most um, satisfying aspect because, you know, we had to really maneuver. We were almost, we almost hit the ground trying to square off uh, in order to be able to drop the bomb uh, and then to time it just perfectly. Um, it just worked out really well. Very satisfying when you can pull that off. Uh, we got the victory and uh, over 8,000 combat points and um, just a great uh, fun little match there. Uh, this is, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this is just one of my absolute favorite aircraft. Uh, a lot of aces in World War II, American aces, flew uh, this aircraft. And it was just, you know, very effective against ground targets. Did a lot of strafing and rocket attacks on trains and, you know, other um, targets of opportunity uh, in Germany. So just, just really a fantastic plane. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, it's it's a very you know uh, awesome looking design. Just a lot of fun. All right. Well, um, I hope you have really enjoyed that video. And uh, if you get an opportunity to fly the P forty seven in Thunderbolt, I think that uh, you will also have great success in it.